Okay, so the next motor I'm working on is going to be a 911 Shroud 2165 motor, if I remember right. I have dual 44 IDFs. That'll be on the dyno. And I know you're saying, well, why are you talking about that? And you're looking at this. Well, while I'm waiting for the motor on the dyno to cool off, I can't put the other motor on the next one. So this guy's waiting. But what he's waiting on, so I, I did all this, lined it all up, and lined up perfect. Look at that. But, um need to do this right here is going on right here as you can see i already made some marks but uh the problem is this has already been ceramic coated so i need to take it up on the lathe and cut off the ceramic coat so that this guy will butt up against it and the more and more i mock it up i kind of want to move it in even closer even so I, I might trim it back so I need to do that right now i just took the bolts out that's ready so before I actually commit to it here, I'm thinking about moving it in closer. Get that outer edge because uh, where it's ceramic coated, that's actually where if you're welding, the bead of the weld's gonna lap into that corner there where I'm basically touching. So I gotta clear that out. So if you look at it, you'll see, well, you can see that little bump there I'm taking away. That's gonna blend into that, so it's kind of hard. I'm gonna try not to go up this wall. I'm gonna try to be halfway up it when I weld, so it'll be in fresh aluminum, but there's a good chance it won't, so. I'm just clearing it just in case, make life easy on Okay, so I positioned it where I thought it needed to be, put a mark on it, put it on the table here, got it to balance in that spot, put a nice big giant thick uh, weld on it. You can see there's my marks. And I basically used a bolt to put in between there to give me my spacing so that I can go back and weld that in now. All right, so let's go check it. Let's go see if if I got lucky or do I need a mod. You know, holding it in place. All I had to do was just bend it up a little bit. So as the, the weld, the weld's on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it. But as it cooled, it pulled the manifold downward. I guess it would be that way on the camera. So uh, otherwise, I think I'm good. I'm balanced or I'm level. Not balanced, but level. All right, let's go weld over up. Okay, there you go. And right now, I just want to let you know, I just got a call from the sun and apparently they want their heat back because I stole a bunch of their heat and it's in this manifold right now. This thing is hot. There you go. I, I can't unfortunately grab it and show you, but it is attached. Woohoo. Okay. Next. There you go. Installed. Nice and tight lineup. You can see I haven't bolted up. It's just hanging right now, but at least get the the look of it all I'm happy nice and I, I, I want it as tight as possible this way as close as possible to the plenum you can see there is a little bit of a gap but and coming in and everything and then the water mask gonna spray right there this will be for all boost signals you always want to do that too if you can if you're running water meth is run the water meth and in, injection nozzle downstream and your boost signaling for Whatever, for your fuel injection, for your water mess signal, for your gauges, your wastegate, put it further upstream. The reason for that is you don't want water mess spraying into those lines, contaminating the sensors and stuff like that. So sometimes if your turbo has like a provision, like it might have an, a, another port somewhere over here, that's a perfect port for boost. Put that for all your boost signaling and then water meth maybe on the outlet or even further down. All right. This guy, I think, is about not done. I still got a, I got the valve covers, just got a bolt on, and then a couple little things.